Well, that was a different song choice, Tyler. I would just like <laughs> you to know that now. Uh, Seven-year vet, NCAA National Player of the Year in 2008, 2009 National Champion. He's repping it right now in North Carolina. Tyler is here. Beautiful, beautiful background that you've got going on there. I, first of all, we've got to start out. You and Lou know each other. We try to figure Lou out. He's a mystery to most. What, what's he like as a teammate? Should we know anything? Hey, Lou's a great teammate. Played two years in Toronto, also same high school class. Uh, laid back dude, so I enjoyed my time with Lou. Okay. Thank you, T. Well, that's not I what we're learning, that. but we I appreciate will it, brother. take that into consideration. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, Nick, again, nicknames. We love nicknames. Psycho T is on the short list of what I think are great nicknames. Who gave it to you, and do you love it, or are there times you're like, it's not my favorite? Uh, there are times definitely when it's not my favorite, <laughs> uh, but uh, I got that in college. And I got it with our strength coach, Jonas Serration, at UNC. And he kind of gave it to me as a joke because I was a super quiet guy uh, my freshman year. And then I'd have a few outbursts. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm my own dude. And so uh, sometimes people can take the psycho T and kind of apply it to my off-the-court lifestyle, which really isn't appliable. So they get a little confused <laughs> and mixed up. Psycho T is so strong. No, he's, super, he's super laid back. The Psycho T is funny because he said, I'm laid back. He was the same type of laid back. But however, it could get intense every once in a while. And that's, <laughs> and that's what made it fun. I like think that. that's OK. Like, you have to have a little bit of the, the rage uh, in there. This, it's that time of year, by the way. Everyone's got their brackets. Chandler's got his right here. We're sort of filling them out. But it feels like there's a lot of parody this time around. Do you, do you think we're headed for a great tournament in your estimation? Uh, I do, and the reason I say that is because the reason there's a lot of parity is because college basketball has gotten a lot older, and with the COVID year and with the guys that are 25 years older, they're in the fifth year, I think there's a lot to be said about that, and you see, you saw last year like San Diego State, FAU, and some teams like that kind of emerge. I don't, I don't think it's quite like last year. I think uh, the number one seeds may advance a little bit farther, uh, and you're a little bit more secure with them, but... Uh, when I look, at, you know, it's always interesting to see, you know, I say that there could be some breakout team that go, goes and has a nice little run. Yeah, Tyler, I'm filling out my bracket here. I got all number one seeds going to at least the Sweet 16, <laughs> then kind of then from there it's a crapshoot. Uh, when you're filling out your bracket this time of year, what do you look for? Is, is it coaching? Is it uh, an older guard that can score points? Is it a dominating big like Edie at Purdue? What do you look for when you look for a team to advance? Uh, honestly, I look for older teams, and I like teams that have had a good uh, run throughout the whole year, but also I like teams that have had a really good run and have kind of lost early in, the, uh, you know, in their conference tournament. And the reason I say that is because sometimes when you lose in your conference tournament, I think it makes the teams uh, focus on what they're not good at and try to get a little hungry going into the tournament. Um, with that said, uh, I do like uh, St. Mary's to me is a team that's very disciplined. That's kind of flying under the radar. They have some older guys. They play defense. Uh, and I think also defense wins in the tournament. Uh, you know, these college kids are not used to playing on neutral courts. It's a little bit different. They're throwing off their routine. And so they can't rely on making shots. Teams that play defense and can win ugly. I think those are teams that are going to be a little more secure in your picks. Yeah, Chandler got St. Mary's losing first round. I know, I'm like looking at him. No, that's not true. I got, them, I got them beating Grand Canyon, but then I do have them losing to Bamba in the second round, so what the hell do I know? Uh, there's obviously a lot of good players in this tournament. Who's the one player that you're most excited to, to watch? Ooh, uh, I hate saying Zach Eady just because – uh, he's been so dominant, but I, I really feel like he hasn't gotten the credit he deserves. Uh, he has been dominating college basketball basketball for two years. Uh, they didn't have the success that they wanted last year. They had an early round exit. Obviously, in the year prior, they got exited uh, pretty quickly as well. So there's a lot of pressure on Purdue, and Edie has just been dominant. But also, uh, Tennessee has this kid named Dalton Connect mm -hmm. who can really get it going. And if he catches fire, he can get on a streak and really light some teams up. So it's going to be interesting watching those two players. Right. Got to write this down. Tyler, to you, who is the most complete team in this tournament? Uh, hmm. You know, you, I guess you could say UNC, maybe. Potentially. <laughs> yeah, you, you can. Uh, it would be hard for me to make that claim because we played UConn early on. And we got absolutely bully balled. Uh, UConn, to me, is the toughest 
hardest playing team. They play a sophisticated style of offense. They make teams guard them uh, throughout the whole game. You have to work defensively, and they are big and physical, and they play hard, and they will beat you up. Uh, UConn, to me, has been the most dominant team uh, throughout college basketball this year. I really like UConn. Uh, UNC, we've gotten better as the year, go- year has gone on. Uh, we play good defense. Uh, we have, you know, a, a lot of good transfers and some older players, so I definitely like us as well. I, kn- I know you mentioned St. Mary's, and I-, I won't ask you to go through the whole bracket, but give me a couple of your Cinderella's. Who you, who you think is going to make a real run? You know, I like Creighton. Uh, I think Creighton, they have a Kalkmanner guy who is one of the best defensive players uh, in college basketball. They also have a kid named Trey Alexander who's probably going to be an NBA pick. Uh, He can get you a bucket. They have Baylor Shireman who can light you up and score. But also they have this Stephen Ashworth kid. He's a fifth-year guy. Uh, You can rely on him late in the game. He'll make free throws. Uh, They're an older team. I like Creighton. I think they can make a run. Um, Yeah, yeah, that would kind of be my Cinderella. Even though they are a three, I don't really think they've gotten the credit they deserve. And I think they're – they can make a run. Are you just yeah. taking side notes? Chandler don't like Creighton either. <laughs> Chandler, Chandler's the most. I got him losing to Oregon second round, Tyler. <laughs> Might want to redo another. Do another bracket. You can have multiple there, brackets. No erase from Yeah, you should have done it in pencil. Um, you're a blue blood guy. We're going to talk about the blue bloods right now. Who's got the best shot to go the furthest, in your opinion? Come on now. Well, I mean, he's got to, like, what, I have to ask. You know what he's going to say. Well, he might not. It's got to be my Tar Heels. Uh, <laughs> and listen, uh, hey, Duke's shown some vulnerabilities throughout the whole year. Uh, they're a good team. They have the pieces. And I don't really think they've reached their potential throughout the whole year. But uh, Filipowski, uh, you know, I really think that uh, mm-hmm. he's kind of an outside threat. But, you know, Lively came on late for them last year, and they're realizing how important a rim protector is. Uh, And also Kentucky, they haven't consistently played defense all year. Uh, And they're young, but they have a high ceiling. They have a lot of guys that can score. Uh, If they show up and play defense, they could be a team that could actually end up in the championship game. This is going to be, you know, will they commit to the defensive end for Kentucky? Tyler, we both played all four years at our schools here. And do you think the days of seeing that are done because of the NIL and the transfer rule? There's there's no real accountability, right, for kids, right? If they get more money, if they get more, they can just go and transfer and, and you know, not sit out. Do you think the days of a four-year guy at the same school are kind of dead? They are. Uh, with that said, Armando, I mean, he's in yeah. his fourth year. Uh, but... Uh, you know, for my Tar Heels, but it is, it's getting rare. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the portal. Uh, the portal's actually open right now, so guys can actually enter the transfer portal as the NCAA tournament is about to begin, which isn't the, the most thought-out idea of doing the portal. I think it should be after the college basketball season is over. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there's still a lot of issues with the NIL and the portal that I think will get smoothed out. But, uh, yeah, Chandler, I'm with you. I would like to see guys kind of stay uh, at some schools a little bit longer instead of just going to different schools and transferring multiple times because, you know, in the reality, you know, you got to look in the mirror and, you know, at some point realize, hey, I've got to improve my game. Maybe it's not just, you know, the situation I'm in right here. Yeah. Now, Tyler, the name of the game now, nowadays. <laughs> If you were in today's college game, Uh-oh. would you have entertained the idea of transferring schools for a bigger offer? Or is, is <laughs> they you can bleed blue all now. through and through? Like, what if Duke came through with a huge check? <laughs> Oof. It doesn't matter the, the check that Duke would, uh, would offer. I want to stay in Carolina just based off of my loyalty and who I am. Uh, now, everything is up for sale with that said. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, you know what, Lou? That's an interesting question. I... No, nah, it'd be tough for me to leave Carolina because I think they could have figured it out. Uh, we get funding from somebody. But, you know, with that said, I always think that kids should actually not be so worried about how much money they can make in college because if they're good enough to make that money in college, then I think eventually the NBA, they'll have that career and make their money there somehow. That's just my thought. Yeah, Tyler, the, the NIL, it's, it's nuts. I always talk to, you know, Joe Kim Noah, Tim Tebow, Johnny Football. You are that name for college basketball, so your NIL, got to imagine you would have made millions of dollars. Do you ever think about, you know, damn, if I played now, I would make this much or, you know, because it would be nuts. 
I try not to. Uh, no, and I don't get too caught up in that. And honestly, I'm happy that the kids can get paid for it now. And uh, I'm glad that somebody's reaping these benefits. But, you know, it's been uh, – there was a lot of – you know, in my opinion, rules that shouldn't have been in place in the NCAA. And now it just seems like it's a lot of all West. But I am excited that these kids can get paid and get some money now. Yeah. Uh, what was sweeter, winning the national championship or knowing you went 6-2 and two against Duke in your career? <laughs> oh, it was a national championship. Fair, but is it uh, close? It wouldn't have felt right. <laughs> no, it wasn't even close. <laughs> good, uh, good, good. Yeah. So you mentioned Filipowski. Um, we all have opinions on that entire ordeal. The court storming. What was your, uh, when you saw that, what did you think? I, uh, <laughs> honestly, I felt like they handled it the most Duke fashion they could handle it. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, a little bit over, it was a little bit over dramatized, for my opinion. Chandler People wants to ban court storming. That's not I true. Disagree. I just said yes, I'm surprised yes, there hasn't did. been a situation where a Philip, whatever, you know, punched somebody, actually had like a fight with a, with a dude running up on him. I just said I feel like that that is going to happen with but hundreds of But then he kicked the dude like two games later. He's not great. <laughs> yeah. He did trip him. He did Grayson <laughs> Allen afterwards. He's not afterwards. great. <laughs> no, I'm all for court storming. This is what makes college basketball special. Uh, the fans and the passion. And listen, uh, you know, I know some people said they should barricade the court and, uh, you know, arrest everybody. I thought that was a little extreme. Listen, yeah, hey, ridiculous. if somebody – yeah, I mean, you know, protect yourself at all times. You should read the room as well. Uh, you know, you're Duke. You're playing at Wake. You're about to lose. You can see the, the students starting to storm the court. Hey, maybe buckle up, brace yourself, or find a, a smoother way to exit. And, you know, maybe there's some things that could smooth out uh, as far as the home team. But I'm all for court storming. Find a place to hide. Um, we love Mount Rushmore's in sports. Always will. It, it's just fun to do. So we want a Mount Rushmore of the most – Annoying Duke players, <laughs> in your opinion. I mean, this one, there's so many. Ooh, so my top, what, <laughs> three? Uh, let's see here. Uh, I mean, J.J. Redick, just because he was so good. For sure. And so many people hated him in college. Uh, he kind of egged it on a little bit. I would put him up there. Uh, then you got to go with Christian Leitner. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like he's just, as, you know, the you know the poster boy for Duke. Uh <laughs> And, you know, you could say, like, Grayson Allen, uh, because of his tripping, he was very Duke-esque. Uh, him, uh, Greg Paulus, you know, for me, Gerald Henderson probably up there. Oh, why is that? So, all <laughs> <laughs> Anything in particular that he did? Yeah. Hey. Um, you know, me, actually, me and Gerald are pretty good friends now. Uh, but back in the day, there was a lot of hatred because of that incident. Um, but, uh, yeah, those would be all my Duke guys up there. Grayson Allen, I think, has to be the top, right? Yeah, I, don't I didn't even play college basketball, and I had a thing with Grayson Allen. I was like, I don't like this kid. Yeah, it's, it's punchable. <laughs> um, we've got a nice moment we found between you and Lou. Oh, what a gift this is about oh, to wow. be for you, Lou. I'm kind of excited to see it. Oh, here we go. I know exactly what you're going to throw What's that about? To buddy? be young again, young Tyler. Buddy. To be young again. <laughs> oh man. Oh, this Whoa. makes. I'm gonna show this to my kids. You wouldn't believe, my kids think I, I was an. I'm an awful person. So I gotta show this to them. Oh. Mm. Look at you, I'm so bad, young, Lou. Lou. Uh, hey man. I, I, once upon a time, I was flying. Babies. I thought I might have fouled him too, but yeah, you know, yeah it looks like I, it, it was clean. I no deserved a free throw. Oh, wow, <laughs> deserved a free throw. Tyler, this has been awesome. This time of year is, is the absolute best. Um, best of luck to North Carolina. Maybe they'll upset some folks along yeah. the way. We appreciate the time. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.